make me wanna what is up everybody welcome into the brand new buffalo bills on ny up youtube page home of the shout buffalo football podcast covering your bills yeah bills mafia pretend it's a table and go smash that like and subscribe button on this page for ryan i am matt enjoy this video it's always this awkward dance that's done um <laughs> following the the courting process in the nfl and i think that i think in a lot of ways dable was at a disadvantage as I think Eric Bieniemy has been at a disadvantage for years because your team goes so far in the playoffs and you kind of got to play this cat and mouse, this wait and see. And I think in a lot of cases, teams get a little bit antsy. And we saw that kind of play out in, in Los Angeles with the Chargers. Like, listen, I think Brandon Staley uh, might end up being a great young head coach. Who knows? I mean, it's it's kind of a crap shoot. Uh, I, I, nobody really knows a ton about him. There's people that are excited about him, but for as many as Sean McVay's of the world, there are Kyle Shanahan's. There's you know a million other coaches that that don't pan out. So we'll wait and see. And a lot of people thought that Brian Dable was the perfect fit for Justin Herbert in that offense, but we'll see what they do with the offensive uh, play caller position. But I think that that's what it probably came down to. I'd wager that it had probably more to do with the Chargers not wanting to wait any longer. Uh, on on Dable more so than maybe him not being a fit or him maybe f not impressing in the draft in the interview process. Maybe Staley just impressed enough and, and they were antsy enough to be like, you know what, we just don't feel comfortable waiting. Yeah, I think that's exactly. I mean, if they did not agree to terms with Staley, he was going to Philadelphia, I believe today, or maybe it was later right. yesterday for another interview. A and it's a game of musical chairs. You can be set on a one guy. But the longer you wait, that's less time for these coaches to put their staffs together. It's less time for them to uh, start putting in work on prospects with the you know the draft. I know it's months away, but little things like that, and it adds up. And if you felt like Staley was just as impressive as Brian Dable, and you can have him now, and you think that he can improve that defense, uh, and you you know you you have you're going to have some impressive offensive minds wanting that job. Uh, offensive coordinator that is in Los Angeles with Herbert and Eckler and, and those wide receivers. So at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. And then probably choosing uh, Staley over Brian Dable. But you and I have said from the get go, Matt, we said there were three jobs and I'm going to eliminate Houston because that was one of them. We didn't know how bad it was in terms of that organizational structure, what was going on behind the scenes. That was one of the jobs though, because of Deshaun Watson, who knows what happens there. So throw that one away. Going into these open vacancies, there were two jobs that we thought he was a good fit for, Jacksonville and the Chargers. Jacksonville was smitten with Urban Meyer from the start, and Dable seemed like their uh, second, third candidate in, in terms of who they would want if they were turned down by Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer eventually agrees to terms, so that job's taken. Uh, the opportunity to work with Trevor Lawrence, the opportunity to have a lot of cap space, a uh, good young undrafted free agent running back and, and DJ Chark, uh, that's gone and out the window. And we'd already mentioned the Chargers. The Chargers were a good fit, and when they hired Staley, there's really not much left. It, we, we're not even going to talk about Houston. The only other job left is Philadelphia. And you know, the report out there is he is not interested whatsoever in Philadelphia. He didn't say anything today to make us think otherwise. They're a little bit of a mess behind the scenes, too. They have some tough decisions to be making at the quarterback position, uh, that, which messes up the cap there. So why force yourself into a job that you could be, you know, find yourself out of in a few years when you can stay in Buffalo for a, another season, knowing you have Josh Allen coming back for year four, knowing that you reached the AFC title game, if not further than that this year, and you still have Steph Diggs and you still have Cole Beasley and John Brown and Gabriel Davis and the list goes on and on. You don't leave a situation like that unless you feel like you are going to a head coaching situation that is at least its equivalent. 